Okay, last uh, last bit of business to uh, show regarding hardware. Jared, show off how you control yours. Yeah, sure thing. So I've got two what they call Oculus Touch controllers. Now, these ones have got aftermarket straps on them, so I can just slide my hands in like that, um, and then I'm in there like that. Um, so I've got the triggers on the top, and on the sides, I've got like pincer triggers what these tra these straps do is let me independently control them because otherwise i have to like hold it like that oh and my is to like want to grab it and see like for for big handed dudes like me these are pretty small grips right mm -hmm. like i've only got two fingers of grip on them so having these knuckle straps like that allow me to just wave them around and not have any problems at all okay now on the on the top of them you've got like two separate um control Oops, that one's a little bit, uh, uh, that one. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So you'll see that they've got basically A, B, X, Y, two thumbsticks and an Oculus menu on the right and uh, like a context menu on the left. So d depending on what game you've got, they work differently, but always the Oculus menu there will get you back to like a an overlay in the yep. game. It's almost like a pause menu, really. Mm -hmm. And these are all wireless you don't need sensors for them um, they've got infrared um tracking on them so the the headset can pick up the infrared signals from them and it knows where they are and no cameras or anything okay um now while i do have the oculus touch controls i still haven't bothered to hook them up mm. there's a good reason for that <laughs> because if i hook them up it then wants to override like let's say a 360 controller. Um, I don't want that overriding because I'm dealing with something else entirely, and that is my PinSim micro cab that I built. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm playing on, folks. Yeah. And so my joystick there uh, does do navigation. I've got the A, B, X, Y buttons uh, on there too. Um, you know, so those are what are what are here on the top. Obviously, I have here two sets of uh, flipper controls. So this is the front one is the one that I use. Um, and then this right here is a Y button. And you may be asking, why the third button? Well, you know how there's uh, wizard upgrades in Pinball yep. FX3? Well, I wanted to just be able to quickly hit that button and activate it rather than having to reach over to the top of the uh, of the unit there. And um, feel where it is. Because you have where it is. like because you know when like, you know, stern cabinets where they got the big apron button you can whack, you know, yeah. that's really easy to find because you're looking at it. But when yeah. you got your headset on, you, you don't really know where it is. And you gotta like get those wizard upgrades activated fast. Yeah. Usually. So you need it right where you can get it. So that's a really good a Well and good sometimes you also it. have to hold the button in while mm. flipping. <laughs> So if oh, you had yeah. to take one hand off, then you'd be down a flipper button. So I wanted it right there, um, easy to access, really and it works there. really well. So the wonderful, beautiful thing. My my controller is the standard height of a pinball machine. It's the same height as my 8-Ball Deluxe um, for, for my hands resting, uh, which turns out I believe this is the same height as what the Arcade 1-Up Cab is. I'll be... When I get one of those, I'll be throwing this side by side and seeing. Um, That'll be a good comparison. Yeah, mine it's is really also just the first first four inches of a pinball cabinet. Eight sliced inches. Off, it's the first really. eight inches. Eight inches. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, it's the same width as a pinball cabinet, twenty two inches wide. Mm -hmm. Um, for a standard pinball cab, um, you can see obviously I've got the uh, I've got the the plunger and my launch button. These are my menu button, menu and pause button on the front, and. Being in VR and having a hard surface to put your hands on is amazing <laughs> because one of the problems that I have be. with VR is when I'm standing there, I start to lose balance sometimes and I mm. and you lose t complete track of what's in the room around you. And next thing you know, you're falling over the couch or stepping on something. To be able to put my hand down on a hard surface and know that that's my home base... Um, really allowed me to be in VR much longer than I ever previously have. And plus, when you're playing pinball, I'm used to standing and playing pinball. Jared, you actually sit in your chair a lot of times. Yeah, right? I do. So what I do, I'll roll back. 
what I do is have my two controllers in my hand and I'm just, I've set up my, my perimeter and I'll fade away when I'm doing this, but I'll just go like this basically. And I'm just playing here like this. Oh, okay. It's like, so it's, it's uh, comfortable for me to do that. Um, I don't have, what well, number one, I don't have a pin sim. Number two, yes. <laughs> I don't really have the, I mean, I could stand, but we'll, we'll go into that a little bit later in the show about the differences between, you know, play styles and how you play yeah. in VR. Yeah. I can definitely say, though, hopefully it'd be wonderful if Zen got together with Arcade 1UP and produced a cab of this nature um, as a peripheral. If I could get my hands on one of these that was twi a Quest 2 compatible mm -hmm. um, and I didn't have to like mess around with it, it would be very, very good. And I would get one very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> because it is true, like you, depending on the game you're playing, the way you interact with the, the actual physical controller in the case of the pin sim um really does complete the whole illusion like you really do feel like you're standing right in front of that digital machine playing yeah. it uh, it is quite quite impressive so, so if you're if if you guys are wondering how come the cab isn't right there like it normally is that's because it's in the other room with the vr setup <laughs> um i didn't yeah. feel like dragging it all the way back in here just to you know put it in here for a moment um, that's his new home for now in, a, out there, yeah, out there, out there in the uh, in the big living room for me. Um, okay, so there's the hardware, right? Um, I'm dealing with old hardware. Jared's dealing with much, 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 much newer. The newest of hardware, very from shiny, Oculus, yeah. at least. Um, Oculus, obviously, yeah. we don't have an H, you know, the Vive. We don't have the PSVR. Um, any of these? We're not a VR show. We're not, no, we're not, we're really not. It's not what we review. Um, and I will tell you that if you want, like, uh, while we're talking about, you know, the the best places to to hear about video, because we're the best place to hear about digital pinball. Um, but the best place to hear about um, VR that I've found um, is a channel called the VR Oasis. And it's run by this guy called Mike. He's been doing VR ever since VR was a thing. Um, He's got a really, really great way of explaining things, both for seasoned players and for new players. He covers everything in the industry, all the games. Um, really, really good guy to check out. VR Oasis, Mike from VR Oasis. Really great. Check it out. 